Pluto, which used to be regarded as the ninth and farthest planet from the Sun, is the largest dwarf planet known to exist in our solar system. This weird dwarf planet is found in the Kuiper Belt, which is a region beyond Neptune's orbit. Pluto is significantly smaller than the inner planets, and like other Kuiper Belt objects, is mostly composed of ice and rock. It is also one-sixth the mass and one-third as large as the Earth's moon. Pluto is characterized by a heart-shaped glacier, tints of blue and reddish-orange, whirling moons, mountains as tall as the Rockies, and yes, red snow. This world has long since eluded scientists, as it is located on the far side of space, the Kuiper Belt. But thanks to groundbreaking innovations and advancements, even this side of space is now at our fingertips. The NASA New Horizons probe made its historic journey through the Pluto system, delivering the first up-close views of Pluto and its moons. This fantastic flyby also helped in gathering additional information that has now revolutionized our knowledge of this enigmatic body at the edge of the solar system. So, how exactly is Pluto's surface and atmosphere, since it has long since eluded us? And most importantly, what did astronomers discover during this amazing flyby? Geology. At a distance of 3 billion miles from Earth, NASA's New Horizons spacecraft was traveling at an incredible speed of 36,400 miles per hour, or 58,536 kilometers per hour, the fastest launch velocity a human-made object has ever achieved in relation to Earth, all pointing spectrometers, cameras, and other sensors at Pluto and its moons. Hundreds of images were taken, as well as other data that would forever alter our understanding of the outer solar system. According to the first scientific research from NASA's New Horizons spacecraft, the dwarf planet is unlike any other object in the solar system. Instead, its immensely varied surface looks like a patchwork of geological textures and patterns that have been remixed and altered from other moons and planets. In fact, pick up a little of Mars, a dab of Triton from Neptune, and a teeny tiny bit of Lapidus from Saturn, and voila, you will get something that looks like Pluto. Pluto's geology is made up of other features of its crust, interior, and surface. Astronomers have even also found evidence that suggests this dwarf planet may have formerly had a subterranean ocean, which would have made it potentially habitable. And like Mars, it possesses volatile substances that alternate between sublimating back into the atmosphere and freezing onto the surface. Surface Pluto's surface is mostly made up of nitrogen ice, with a little amount of carbon monoxide and methane. With valleys, mountains, craters, and plains, temperature on this dwarf planet can reach minus 226 to minus 240 degrees Celsius minus 375 to minus 400 degrees Fahrenheit. The tallest mountains on Pluto range in height from 6,500 to 9,800 feet, two to three kilometers. Large chunks of water ice make up the mountains, which may have a layer of icy gases like methane on top. The extensive dips and troughs of this distant dwarf planet, which can extend to 370 miles or 600 kilometers, further adds to its intriguing features. The breathtakingly dazzling scenery of Pluto also contrasts with its dark regions, much like Lapidus. Additionally, it appears to have wind-made stripes marring its icy surface, much like Triton does. The ice surface of Pluto displays an astounding range of topography, as well as signs of ongoing geological processes, the results of these seasonal processes are also depicted in high-resolution images taken by New Horizons. There are glaciers of frozen nitrogen that feed into a large basin, enormous ice mountains, odd dips and ridges, tectonic cracks, and maybe ice volcanoes, among other features on the dwarf planet's surface. In fact, the huge, a thousand kilometer wide heart-shaped nitrogen glacier on Pluto, known as Sputnik Planum, 
is still the largest glacier yet found in the solar system. Another region of Pluto, known as the Cthulhu region, is a dark, cratered, ancient-looking area that lies next to the light-colored Sputnik Planum. According to team member William McKinnon, a planetary scientist at Washington University in St. Louis, Missouri, the craters could be up to 4 billion years old and date from the early solar system's frequent bombardment by asteroids. Then there's Charon, the largest of the five moons of this dwarf planet. Has ammonia patches on its surface and a few of its impact craters. More solid methane is present on Pluto's side facing Charon, while more solid nitrogen and carbon monoxide is present on its opposite face. Seasonality and topography, as opposed to subsurface processes, are thought to have a greater impact on the distribution of volatile ices than do solar insulation and topography. Also implied by its density is the presence of substances on the moon that are denser than water ice, such as silicates and organic molecules. In fact, scientists are of the mind that the atmospheric gases that escape from Pluto and then accumulated on Charon's surface are the cause of the planet's very dark and crimson polar cap. This phenomenon, which is unheard of in the solar system, is one of the most amazing discoveries from the results of New Horizon. And as for the other moons possessed by this dwarf planet, surface craters can be used to date every one of these moons, and they all have the same, very old age. This supports the theory that researchers have always had that they were all formed in the Kuiper Belt a long time ago after a major collision between Pluto and another star. Other regions of Pluto appear to be a jumble of materials that are neither dark, like Cthulhu, nor dazzling like Sputnik Planum. Researchers have also come to the conclusion that Pluto contains a lot of objects that don't really resemble anything we've ever seen. This includes a snakeskin topography that may have gradually hardened into ridges, resembling blades as material froze, evaporated, and then refroze. Atmosphere Since Pluto is so far away, learning anything about it is difficult. Astronomers observed the dwarf planet as it orbited in front of blazing stars to verify that it did, in fact, contain an atmosphere. Following this experiment, which they replicated several times, they could see that the light from the stars became gradually obstructed when Pluto itself crossed them, a clear indication that there was indeed an atmosphere in this distant object. Pluto orbits the Sun in a distorted fashion. Between 30 and 50 times farther from the Sun than Earth, it is believed that the atmosphere of the planet may even be affected by Pluto's fluctuating distance. And in a simple twist of chemistry, and just like comets, the gases refreeze and solidify when Pluto is farther from the Sun, and the ices melt when it's closer to the Sun. Before the results from New Horizon arrived, scientists predicted that a sizable percentage of the nitrogen atmosphere would have escaped into space, since it is made up of 90% of this gas. But shockingly, the atmosphere of the planet remained very thick, suggesting that something was still abetting it. Scientists, however, believe that the atmosphere might be emanating from Pluto's core through processes like continuing geysers of ice volcanoes, and they have young-looking patches on the planet's surface that support this. While no geysers have yet been found in the data from New Horizons, several of Pluto's mountains have been hypothesized to be ice volcanoes. Pluto shows signs of significant variations in atmospheric pressure and may have formerly had liquid volatiles standing or flowing on its surface, which can only be found on Earth, Mars, and Saturn's moon Titan in our solar system. Its atmosphere also contains sophisticated organic compounds that give it a hazy blue tint. Tholins, which have a reddish color but yet scatter light at blue wavelengths, is responsible for Pluto's reddish-orange hue, the same process that gives Earth its blue sky. Following the success of the study of Pluto, NASA has given its approval of an extended mission. So, New Horizons has currently traveled nearly 300 million miles beyond Pluto and is already hurtling towards its next stop deeper into the Kuiper Belt. We have, however, been left with a considerably better set of theories for many locations on Pluto than we had many years ago, thanks to this fantastic voyage from this spacecraft.